to this computer. Okay, yeah, try you can start. Okay, so for B, um, the problem is, is like for each person, um, there are two property, uh, properties of the person, like the, the time it takes to run the first leg and the time he takes to run like the second, third, and fourth leg. So we need to like select four people so that like the sum of uh, the sum of their and it's like select four people and to assign them to one of the legs so that the sum of their time um, is as low as possible. Um, hi. <laughs> so for this problem, we need to realize that the only thing that matters is the person running on the first leg. And for the second, the third, and the fourth leg, you can choose the, uh, the three fastest people um, running on the second, third, and fourth leg. So the solution would be to iterate over the person who is running on the first leg, and then to sort every other person and choose the the three fastest the three fastest people running for the second, third, and fourth leg. Yeah, so that's what I did. So yeah, I just want to add. Uh, so my first attempt failed, and uh, uh, I still haven't figured out why. But my uh, what I tried was uh, uh, I, I so I, after sorting based on the second leg uh, uh, speed. Uh, then I find among other than the top three, so among the the rest of them, I find the one who's uh, fastest in the in the uh, start time. So then that is one solution. So that is one possibility. So, and then uh, I consider each of the 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 three who's uh, fastest in the in the uh, second start or the fly start. Uh, if I use them as the uh, as the first uh, first start, and then I'll be using uh the the other the the uh, among the other sort of among the top four uh uh second uh, well this is really difficult to say among the top four who have a fastest uh second uh they call this with flying flying start time no, um, start so time. they just consider all these four possibilities uh, it's constant time but uh, somehow it failed and i instead of uh, i realize if i try to debug it probably take longer than just to rewrite uh, the using what uh, the, the same idea as what Trump described Hmm. Yeah, so I believe the next easiest problem would be um, D, E, and I. So let's start with I first. So for I, um, basically you're given a, a dependency graph and you need to detect if there is a cycle. And um, if there is, then you need to output like the shortest cycle. One difficulty with this problem is parsing. So um, the difficulty is comes from the fact that, um, like, we know that for each package, we know how many lines of dependency code there are, but we don't know like for each line how, uh, like how many different dependency it has. So, one way to do that is to use is to utilize the C plus plus get line, or I believe. In Python, you can use input. It will also read the whole line. Um, so for example, let's take this test. I'm using C in, C out, like that's for C++. So let's say we have read like the first two lines and then we, for, we read the third line. So we will see in a string and we will see in how many lines, uh, like how many lines of dependency it has. Okay. So after that, we need to get like these number of lines after that. Um, one thing to notice is that when using C in, um, after you have read like until the end of the line, um, the input pointer will actually stay at the end of the line. So you would want to skip this line to go to the next line. So you would use, um, let's see, string line so let's say you need to skip that line so get line c in line and now you have skipped this line and go to the first line uh, the, the pointer will go to the start of the next line so 
Yeah. I guess for this particular problem, you can do it. Uh, this step can be slightly simplified by you just read another string after number of lines that will consume the import. And then when you do get line, you just get the thing that you need to pass. That's, the that's, uh, that's actually correct. Yeah, you can do that too. But um, yeah. I, I, I personally did it this way. Yeah. So you need to next, uh, let's loop over the number of lines for over the number of, number of lines. And you will want to read in the line, so you will get line C in line. But now, like the line string here will contain like the whole line. So you would want to separate them out. So to separate them out, you can use the packet, uh, you can use the, um, the object string stream. So string stream will take, it's basically creating a new input stream, but it will use like, a string as like the input. So string stream SS and it would use line as the input. And now you can separate the separate the um like the, the little strings apart from each other. So let's say we do SS is uh, SS reading into um let's say str no no not str so ss reading into um dependency and the first one should be skipped because this is in, this is import and then we need to continue reading the dependency process yeah this is what i did oh i think yeah. i guess i just didn't realize actually there's uh there's uh uh there's a white space uh, separating this uh, after all so just yeah. uh, using this uh, yeah, so because there are white space separating um, like the different tokens, we can use string stream and then just read it, just just in, uh, initialize it with the line that we have read and then use it like CN. Then, then do you do you check for the comma and delete it or something? Yeah, sure. That, yeah. That's what I did too. I so I, I check for the comma. That's, that's what the whole process the is. So yeah, yeah. So this is how the parsing works for, uh, for I. At least that, that's what I did. Yeah, I guess I got a sort of, uh, I, I was trying to parse based on comma in this system, and then things get uh, uh, messy. And then there's, uh, uh, sometimes there's a thing after C, which I guess sometimes there isn't, yeah. Okay, mm. good. Yeah, and I, I guess high level idea. So what, what did you, what's the high level idea did you do for this? Did you? Did you do Floyd Washo or did you do BFS? Yeah. So the high level idea, um, I, I shouldn't say, I shouldn't spoil the algorithm. It's okay, it's okay, yeah, yeah I think, uh, yeah. So. But basically for each edge, you would want to find like, for each edge, let's say from A to B, you would find, you would try to find like the shortest path from B to A, shortest path to A. And then this combined with this edge, would give like the shortest cycle that goes through A and B, uh, A and B, that goes through that edge, sorry. Yeah, and then because we need to do this for every edge, it, it is best to do like um, our pair shortest path. And that can be done with float partial. Yeah, so that's the high level idea. Okay, so I think I will continue with D. I think D is, yeah. <laughs> I think D is beautiful. I messed up on D so bad. I did not do like the correct solution. <laughs> so for D, um, um, to summarize the problem, you're given, you're given N strings, you're given N strings, each with each having M characters. So N bit string, each having M, M characters. So yeah, you read in the bit string, and you would want to find a string that is as different, uh, like is as not similar to the given string as possible. So the similarity is defined in the problem. It is defined like for two strings, we put the same for, for these two strings. Um, for, each, for, each, uh, for each bit, if they are similar, then the similarity increases by one. So basically, the similarity of two bit string is the amount of bits that they have in similar. 
uh, that, that have similar value, yeah. Okay, so um, I, <laughs> I will discuss my solution first because um, I think it's- Sure, I want to hear what you yeah, did. <laughs> it's, it's really overly complicated and all, really? of, all of those. So I binary search the answer. Um, oh. I binary search like the, the- The distance? The distance, yeah. Oh, wow. Oh. And for each, for, okay, so I know that like the similarity thing it is actually related to SOAR, right? Um, it's because if it's sim similar, then for SOAR, um, it will return zero. Well, but what do you mean problem, SOAR? Well, what's SOAR? So, so like the SOAR operation. Oh, XOR, so another okay. way, yeah, XOR, yeah. For like another way to um, find a similarity is to get the SOAR of the two strings. So this SOAR, these strings would be one, zero, zero, one, one and you count the amount of zero bits. So that means the similarity of these two strings is two because there are two zero bits. Um, so I binary search um, like the answer and then basically because the similarity of the, the two strings ba is based on the XOR operation used on both strings, I try to eliminate, I try to check to eliminate like the, like the um, oh, answer to the SOAR operation. I see, I see, I see. And then I use okay. some um, XOR convolution to, to, to do see. the problem. Um, yeah, so it's that's because why- Because you know the technique, you might as I well- I know the technique. <laughs> um, I, I actually, I, I think, one thing is that I overcomplicate the, the problem. Like I read it and the first thing that comes to my mind is literally mm -hmm. just sore convolution. Mm -hmm. I think for other people, um, yeah. yeah, it does not be that way. Um, I would want to um, share my bug too in case somebody got this wrong. So let's use my first solution. It's actually really close, but it got wrong on this, this test. So my bug mm -hmm. is that I initialize two long long variable, but then I use pair int int to to package those two oh. um, variables. So yeah, I should use pair long 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 long. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, that's that's something you might want to 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 take in mind when you do the problem, like you do other problems. So anyway, to, back to this problem. Um, Another way to think of these problems, uh, to, to think of this problem is do in the reverse. What if we try to find like the, like what if we try to find the bit strings that are as similar to the original strings as possible, but then we eliminate it. Yeah, so then we eliminate it. And basically we keep doing that, we keep finding the bit strings that is as similar to the strings that we have find and we eliminate that and we keep doing that until there is one string left that is eliminate, eliminate the last and that would be our answer because it is as different away from the original strings as possible. Yeah, I guess um, the, the, the way I, I, I think about it, it's uh, the, the code will be similar to, to what uh, Tron just described, but, but at a higher level, um, when you see things have a distance, uh, you, you, you try to see whether they can be modeled as a graph. So, so, so once you model as a graph, so basically we are trying to find the distance that's, uh, find a node whose distance is as far away from some of, from some of the other marked uh, nodes as possible. So then we just uh, do BFI to calculate the distance of uh, every node uh, to, to the, 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 the closest, uh, the smallest distance of this node to, to the starting point. So after you do BFS, then whichever node have the multiple or had the highest uh, distance will be the, will be the solution. Yeah. So I guess I, I guess my uh, the, the, I think the one takeaway is um, one one takeaway is uh, uh, try to model things as graphs because uh, for graphs we we have uh, quite a few uh, tools that we can we can use. So this is uh, I guess this is like a high dimensional grid kind of uh, graph. Yeah. 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 Ye
Mm. And yeah, and also another thing is that the distance here is essentially kind of a Hamming distance. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yep. So that's the. Um, I will continue with E. Mm -hmm. So, um, E is a bit. Um, I think E is a bit difficult to explain the pro to it, like, like the the hardest easiest problem I think. So basically, you are given um, like the map of a square grid. So the, each of the number here represents each of the squares altitude below the seawater level, uh, like uh, in comparison to the sea level. So for example, this cell here has altitude of negative five. It means that it lies five meters below the sea level and this square, for example, has altitude of four, which means that it lies four meters above the sea level. And water can flow in eight directions. I will explain that later. Uh, so you are starting, like you will have a suction device at one of the square. So for this test, the suction device will lie at the square two, two. So it means that it lies at this square. And you want to keep continue sucking from this square and you want to know how many meters of water that you can suck, basically. So for this test, the amount of water it can suck is 10. So to explain this, for first of all, um, it will suck two from this square. So yeah, it will suck two from this square and for this, uh, for this cell, the water can flow from this cell to this cell because it is in the diagonal, um, it is diagonal, diagonally adjacent to this square. So it can suck at most two meters from this square because this, like this cell is, lies five meters below sea level. So I will try to, 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 um, to draw it out actually. So, so let's say th this is the sea level. So this is our cell. It lies two meters uh, below sea level. And this is that cell. It lies like five meters below the sea level. And so if we have a suction device at the bottom of this cell, then we can basically clear off all of, the, all of this cell and we can also clear off like the first two meters of this cell. The lower three meters cannot be sucked because it is lower, so it cannot flow from this to here. Okay. Um, similarly, this cell can be sucked, uh, can be sucked, uh, like this cell can be sucked two meters. The water from this cell can be sucked with an amount of two meters too. So, so far we have eight meters, five from the three minus five and one, two, uh, like two from the three minus five and also two from the original cell. And these two cells that are directly to the left and to the right, because it has the altitude of minus one, that means that we can only suck at most one meter up from these cells. So an explanation would be something like this. Yeah, it can suck all of them, but for this cell, it can suck at most one. Yeah, so that's the explanation. Similarly, you can um, deduce the test for this. Um, so the high level idea is to find out like how for each cell, how many, how, how much water it can it be sucked from. So Basically, for all of the cells that lies above the sea level, we don't need to care about them. Um, however, for the cells that lie below the sea level, we need to find, like, basically we need to find a path so the water can flow from that cell to the beginning cell. And like the highest altitude of that path is as low as possible. So, at, so that, that will give the water more more like more altitude to flow, more depth to flow from. So for example, um, if we have 
this test, for example, minus one, minus three, and this is minus three, minus three, minus three, and let's say this is above sea level. And we have a suction device here. And so the water from this cell will try to use, we try to utilize this path instead of this path. Because if we, if, if it tries to utilize this path, then it, the, then the altitude among, along the path will have like an, an altitude of minus one. So it can be sucked like only negative one meter, uh, like it can be only sucked like one meter out of this cell. However, if it utilizes, if it utilizes this path, then it can be sucked like minus three. Uh, I mean, it can be sucked three meters out of this cell. And combining with this altitude, it can be sucked like two meters out of, the, out of that cell. Yeah. So um, in long story short, for each cell, we need to find a path to the original cell that has the highest altitude on that path as low as possible. Um, it can be used using um, a variation of Dijkstra. I am not sure if that is the Prim's algorithm. I am not familiar with Prim's algorithm. It's a similar. It's a very similar. So, so, but Dijkstra and the Prim are already very similar, and this is yeah. A, yeah, a variant of. Uh, yeah. So yeah, that's that's basically, that's basically E. Yeah, so, so by the way, if, uh, Evan, if you have a question, feel free to ask. Mm. Okay, thanks. So I will move on with, let's see, which, which problem is easiest? Okay, G is the easiest problem. Um, so for G, um, it, it basically um, simulates like a real ICPC, problem, ICPC contest where each team has two properties. First is the number of solve count, uh, like the solve count, the number of problems that has been solved. And the second is the penalty. And the, the ranking is a model of the same. So for two teams, the, high, the team with the higher solve counts will, will be ranked higher. If they have the same solve count, then the team with the lower penalty will be ranked higher. Okay. So, and along the way, they will give, um, they will give like some events about which team has solved and what is the penalty, uh, which team has solved one more problem and what is the penalty of that team solving that problem. And after each event, you need to know where does the team with the number one index lies on the leaderboard. Yeah. So we can model, so basically we can model um, each, uh, each team with like, uh, with a pair of integer. Uh, the first is the number of solve counts, solve counts. And the second is the penalty. And because it's, it's like, we need to update and then we need to find the ranking and there is also a comparison, um, a comparison operator between the between the um, between the model between this sphere. We can basically use an existing like balance binary search <laughs> implementation, and then we can use that, and then we can um, use the the existing implementation to find the ranking of the of the first uh, team. So yeah, so I would actually want to show up my code here. Um, if you know us, if you know how to use like this tree, it is really, it is actually a really simple problem. Uh, so you use the, this uh, policy based? Uh, yes, it's thing. a policy ba based data structure. Uh, is uh, yeah find the rank of uh, object with updates uh. yes so updating updating is really simple you can have like two um, two separate arrays to store like the penalty and the uh, solve count so oops there it is 
it is a bit uh, my computer is a bit slow. So yeah, um, for this for this problem actually, I I have like the team a team as a pair of three properties. The third one being the team index. That is because um, it can happen that two teams will have the same solve count and the same penalty. So in in order to make all of the pairs um, like distinct for the uh, policy based um, data structure to work properly, I, I introduced like the team index to just to make sure like every pair is different. Okay, so yeah. So yeah, maybe explain a little bit of that uh, line. This order set. Uh, this. Oh, I I cannot like explain this line. It is how you um like how you um, initialize um, the like the policy based data structure. So in like I am using this ordered set using ordered set equals to this so that I can just type ordered set mm -hmm. instead of having to type this here. I can type this here and it doesn't change the code at all. So then these uh, tree it, support insert erase and the uh, order of key. Uh, yes. Yeah, so this problem is, is, is revolves around this tree. Um, there is actually a different solution that does not use the tree at all. I don't think it uses any data structure at all, except the, 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 the hardest algorithm being binary search. So what did the, Riley, what did you do for this uh, problem? Do you liked it? Uh... Uh, I also did the ordered set with policy base. <laughs> okay. um, afterwards, um, I thought of a linear time solution also. Okay. So do you, you want to say your solution? Yeah. Um, so the idea I came up with afterwards is we, we can say for each team, we can like figure out which intervals it's better or worse than the favorite team. Uh -huh. And um, so the way you can do that is you can look for each like for each team I, you can look at every time team I or team one is updated and then there's ranges. Um, so, so like the, the, most of the ranges will be the same there. So then the, the problem comes when team one is updated a lot. And there's a little interesting way you can get around that, which is you can ignore all of the team one updates that um, will make it solve more problems than team I will ever solve. Like you can ignore those updates. Okay. Yeah, I guess, yeah. I, uh, so, so maybe I'll make uh, yeah, uh, I make a small video it. after. Yeah, you, uh, so, so my, my solution is also, uh, so, so I think it has some similarity. So, but essentially what I'm maintaining is um, the the a, a multi set of the time for each of the number of problems solved for each number of problem I, I have a separate multi set, and then when when the team when team one updates, I just uh, uh, count how many team are ahead of that team one, and for other team update, and then I check whether this uh, change that team's uh, position relative to team one. If it does, then I will uh, adjust the the, the rank. So um, I think the, the, because uh, if the team one is updated a lot, then by definition, there will be very few team uh, ahead of uh, team one. So then amortize the cost will be okay. So, um, so basically I will go through the, 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 the multi-set for a number of um, uh, so teams who solve problem more than the team one. And those, I just need to add up the size of the size. Well, uh, and for the teams that solve the same number of problems as team one, I, I need to go through the, the, the go through the set to, to, to see how many are, are less than this. But uh, because uh, the team one update, I guess it's, like, it's a little bit like uh, square root decomposition. If there are lots of team one update, then that set will be small. So then the, the overall complexity will be fine. Hmm. But yeah, but it, uh, my code failed because uh, I used the multi set and I, when I erase, I didn't realize it erased all the uh, all the instances of the same same value. So. I see. If you if you want to erase only one value from multi set, you can you can call like lower bound and then erase 
yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, that's how I fixed it afterward. Yeah, I called the, yeah, I used the find uh, and then I erased the, the iterate, uh, the, the iterator return by find, yeah. Okay. So my brand research solution is submitted to Riley's, but instead of like, yeah, basically I brand research the range after each update of um, the author team. So yeah, it's similar. So we can talk, we can discuss yeah. about that. Okay, so the next problem, um, it's K. K, I took a very long time because I could not get all of the cases correct. Um, I think my first submission was actually very close. Yep, it acts, it's actually very close, but it's missing the only one, uh, that one case where I did not figure out until like 10 submissions later. Okay, so I want to discuss about this. Um, so for, um, so you have like a lot of kayakers. Um, they can be categorized into three types, strong one, uh, middle one, and weak one. And you know how many um, how many uh, like characters are in each type and you would want to divide these two characters in uh, these all of these characters into pairs and then put each pair into a kayak and you would want to roll all the kayak home basically so so for for each um, like for each category you know like the amount and the speed, like the strength that each character is in each category has. Oh yeah, basically that, amount and strength. Um, and also you will have like um, just enough kayaks to fit every pair into the kayaks. So um, each kayak will have a property that is its, I think it is its speed. Yeah, it's speed factor C. So if we put like two people, um, like um, A and B into a kayak, then the speed of that kayak will be the speed factor of the kayak. Same kayak. Then the speed of the kayak will be C times strength of A plus strength of B. Sorry, that's move of three. Yeah, yeah. And so you want to basically distribute the people, uh, distribute the characters into pairs and then into kayaks so that the, so that the minimum speed of one kayak is as, maxima, uh, is as maximized as possible. So the minimum of the C times strength A plus strength B is as large as possible, basically. Um, so, yeah, um, it's really obvious that we should binary search the answer. So we want to binary search, binary search the answer, and then for each iteration of binary search, we want to um, distribute like the kayakers into kayaks so that the speed of all of the kayaks is larger than the threshold we are binary searching on. Yep. So uh, there is actually only six ways to like this uh, to to distribute the characters, so we can have a pair of strength uh, strong strong. Sorry, we can have a pair of strong strong, strong middle, strong weak, middle middle, middle weak and weak weak. Yeah, let's um let's abbreviate this so that I can type faster. S M S weak. And, 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 weak, and, weak, weak. and if we sort by the order of the total amount of strength we need, then there are actually two orders, either this or this, where um, basically strong weak and middle middle would change the positions. So for each test case, there's only two possibilities, either this or this. All right. So 
the, just just want to, I, I guess you're kind of omitting something that's uh, obvious which is uh, uh, when you're doing binary search for each round uh, you're using greedy to to see whether it works so yes yeah uh, so that, I, I not necessarily greedy we're just trying to check if it works i will i will uh, really explain not necessarily why greedy, greedy? Works. greedy okay, okay. Yeah, I, I, guess, don't, okay. I don't think it's necessarily greedy i think greedy is like the good solution but um, there can be better solution really? uh, i was thinking okay. about like some sort of matching yesterday and i did like um like really figure out the idea of that solution i see i see so you mean you can, yeah, okay you can yeah. check without actually going through all the pairs uh, yes yes through. yes i see okay so um anyway um we can uh for for each canoe for each kayak i i believe for each canoe we can really choose like the pair with the smallest speed uh with the smallest solar strength but it still satisfies that the speed of that kayak will be um, larger than the threshold we are searching on. Yeah, so we greedily choose that. And then since we have greedily choose that, we will find out that maybe at the end, the, um, like the, the, the distribution is not correct and we need to fix that. So <clears throat> for example, um, we can, for example, after we have distributed, we have found out that, for example, one choose uh, one canoe must be go with strong strong, one canoe must go with strong strong middle, one canoe go with middle middle, and one canoe go with weak weak. But however, the amount of strong middle and weak people that we have are like let's see, one 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 eight. So let's say there are two. two, three, and three. Okay. So uh, after we have matched this, we realize that um, due to our greedy matching, the amount of strong that we need, let's say it is strong apostrophe. It is two times strong is two plus one is three. Uh, middle. Middle apostrophe will be three and weak apostrophe will be two. Okay, so um, this is what we have, and this is what we have really matched. So we would want to like adjust this into this. So um, it is really easy to see that a weak person can be replaced with a strong person, or a middle person can be replaced with a strong person. Basically, someone weaker can be replaced with someone stronger, but it's not the reverse. Yeah, so um, here we have like the number of strong person we need is three, but the number of strong person we actually have is only two. So that means that we cannot replace it. Yeah, that is one, that is one um, way to think about it. Okay, so when does this break down? When does this analogy break down? Where, when do, person... where does those 1111 one, one come from? Uh, it's just like an example. I just want to use the example to like let's demonstrate how my solution works. Okay. Yeah, that, does that make sense? So you are, this is just an example. Okay, just an example. So then, yeah. okay, so and then how, how does your example. solution, are, are you trying to figure out to the each of the six group, how many you assign? You, you have like solving that? Uh, yes, basically. Okay. Yeah. So I guess the six group, you can, you decide the, which one are above the threshold and then you try to, assign value to them so that they add up with the, to, to the... Yep, 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 that, that, okay. that's basically it. I see, I see. Yeah, so basically for each kayak, I assign it to like a group. And then I try to fix this group so that it, um, it, it, it um, yeah, um, it matches the original numbers. Okay, so it's a bit complicated, I think. Um, uh, but however, so let's say that we, we need uh, we have two strong people, but due to our group um, matching, we actually we actually have three people. So that means that we need one more strong people. Um, normally, this would not this would not be um, satisfi satisfiable because there's no way like um, a, 
a middle person or a weak person can replace a strong person. The only case that it breaks down is when we have like a pair of middle middle and it can actually uh, it can actually be replaced with a pair of strong and weak. So that yep so that goes to the first case of my where is it um, it's k right so that goes to the first case of my my solution so if the number of strong people uh, like if the demand of the strong people is less than zero that means like we need one more we need more strong people then we need to see if like there are a pair of weak middle middle and it can be replaced with strong weak yeah so this is the check so i think i think my my, my solution is a uh, it's you require a lot less uh, thinking so <laughs> really I, I literally just go through so for each so, so it's, it's had higher complexity I, so my my solution require uh order n for what order m for each uh, each iteration each uh, binary search uh, iteration i literally go through every kayak and try to assign uh two people uh, greedily to make it work above the threshold and i will uh and i just choose uh, choose uh, greedily be based on the six orders and when no, i assign two people i just reduce the count so if i run out of people run out of way before 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 i assign every m then i fail no no that's 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 what i do that's what, that's what do. you do yeah that's what i did it's i i also assign like for each people uh like for each kayak we i, I assign it to like Okay, okay, okay. I guess okay, okay. I mean, maybe you're just do, it, but but your your complexity is not order m, right? The for each it's, it's also order m. It's also order m. Okay. Yeah, okay. because we okay, need then, to assign every kayak. Okay. So then I guess actually I guess the, the, the so 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 I, I work my my code. I, I basically have uh, two two different version of the check function. One for the, the 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 for the two different ordering, and then just depending on the ordering, oh. I would call what one of them, and then ah, with each ah, check function, it's just a uh, uh, mindless uh, uh, case uh, case uh, the, the the if uh, if check. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's my, my actually my check function. It's only one. It, it's only one. Yeah, you, you, you cases, are, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a very yeah. It's a fairly. It's still so mindless if, if yeah. else here for for yeah. any of the yeah. case. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, it it. it I, I guess it's did you just miss solution. that case is that the, 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 the two possible ordering that caused the uh, no 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 I don't miss that case I don't miss the, the case that I miss is like so I, I, I mentioned here that um, how, how is it like the amount um, like we need to replace some some middle middle with left right right yeah I, I guess what I don't understand is why there's this uh, replacement uh, coming in because uh, because uh, you, you, if I, because you, 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 in my code, I'm just greedily trying to assign the people. So if I think if, the case is that in your code, your your uh, your greedy process has already taken in like the fact that there are two different orders. Right. Mine mm -hmm. doesn't. Okay. I, okay. I take care okay. of that later. Okay. I see. I see. I yeah. see. I see. Okay. So. Yeah. So because I take care of that later, there may there might be like a need of strong people or a dim, like a supply of strong people because mm -hmm. I, I don't match based on like two different orderings. I, I, I try to match greedily and then I fix it later. Okay. That's, that's, that's uh, what I have here for S, S, S okay. apostrophe, basically. Yeah, so um, should we move on or? or yeah, yeah, that's, uh, yeah, unless, yeah, yeah, if actually, if I, anyone I has questions, we, we... Okay. Uh, okay. So, uh, so <laughs> this problem is so stupid. So for C, um, what you need to do is to read the problem first. Um, it defines uh, like for each card there are three properties. You need to do that defines, for all problem, not just C. <laughs> <laughs> like read the problem first. Uh, yeah. yeah, of course. <laughs> um. But for this problem, you need to read it really carefully because it has like an edge case here. Um, anyway, like the, for each card, it has three properties, actually four property, the last property being the index of the card, but we'll talk about that later. So there are three properties, the red angle, the blue angle and the green angle. And it says something about the uniqueness of each angle, which is basically the difference between the next, uh, the closest to the left and the closest to the right of that angle, the difference of them. 
and you need to remove the card in the order of the uniqueness and after each removal you need to update like um like the uniqueness of of the whole card list altogether oh that was a mouthful <clears throat> um yeah so the way i did it is to maintain three sets um the set of red uh the red the set of red angles the set of green angles and the set of blue angles there you go very very not very bad i think yeah so after a removal we can actually see that there is only six um six possible candidate for updating that is the closest to the left the closest to the right of each of the angle color yeah there are only six possible candidates so just based on like the set of colors we can find those six candidates and then we can update them yeah but at at, at, at the end of the day it's just like really bad um, set problem yeah so what are potential pitfalls in here yeah. I, I I cannot see a potential pitfall okay. except from like the the case here so for the case here it says that where is it if the if the two cards A and B have the same angle, B is considered the closest to A in both directions. So that means that uh, because the set orders in, like in, in the set, it orders in only one direction, but not both. So that means that in this case, you will need to manually check if there is any color that is similar to it. So this is what I did here. If there is a color similar to it, I will set the other direction to be that color too, uh, like to be that card too. Yeah. So I also that's... ran to a couple other pitfalls. One is that if there's only one card left, then there aren't two cards like to the left and right. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Another pitfall is that when you have to find the when the next angle to the left or right, you might have to cyclically, uh, like you might have to wrap around the beginning and end of the set. And I had a bug there where um, I didn't do that right. Mm -hmm. So, okay, cool. Yeah. So actually, now I want to, I'm thinking that the kayak, there should be a solution that's uh, like, uh, doesn't depend on M, the complexity, because uh, we're just, so, so, so basically there are six combinations. Um, and uh, once we fix a, uh, once we fix a, a, a particular threshold, then that means only some of those combination can use. Let's say only five can use. Then we basically try to find five integer that satisfy like uh, four equations, right? Well, I tried to, um, to, 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 to dig in that idea too, but I didn't figure it out. Yeah, I, I don't mean, I, I think in, in, in competition, you look at the parameter, but, of course, uh, just, just do in, it. In, in any case, if you have binary search, like the threshold, then for each canoe, you need to know like the range that it can fall into, right? Or right, else... right. But, but, but basically, I'm just saying there, the, the, you will have many canoes of the same type. So, so, so basically, uh, the only thing that matters is just the, 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 the how many canoe are in each of the types. So you have yes, six yes, types. I know, but, 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 yeah. but, we, but doesn't we also need, but like, doesn't we just... No, no, I'm just saying, let's through. say five type of, uh, uh, of uh, are allowed. Let's call the number of them A, B, C, D, E. Then the equation we have is uh, something like uh, A plus B plus C equals uh, E. Uh, oh no, I guess shouldn't call it A, B, C, D, E. That's uh, X, Y, Z, W, uh, U, V, X, Y, Z. Then, th then I will basically have um, three equations for the total number of participants in each of the, 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 the kind. And uh, uh, overall, they have to sum up to, to M. And that's all. I think we have five variable and we have the, the four integer, uh, four, four uh, equations. But, but okay, but we want non-negative solution. I don't know whether there, are, uh, there, there should be quick ways to check that, but it's- It's sort of like a linear program, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I yeah, guess but... integer, I don't know. <laughs> so but but uh, are, there, are there quick ways to, to do this kind of thing? I, I don't think it's possible anyway. Um, the, so the reason that it is that 
like for each canoe, uh, like we know that the strong, the order is strong. Like, let, let me try this again. Hmm. So for each canoe, we know we must like we must go through them to know like which range it can be assigned to. So oh, we know, you're yeah, right, you're right. Yeah, to, I forgot that uh, the, the each yeah. canoe have its own. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it, each canoe has yeah, its own yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, okay, speed okay, factor. Yeah, so we need that, to yeah. Yeah, yeah loop over them anyway. Yeah. Yeah. But, you, but you can still reduce it to like a linear program with very few variables because you just need to know how many canoes are in each of the. Yep, yep, that's true. I don't know. I, I don't know if I want to code linear programming. Yeah, but, yeah, but I'm not yeah. sure if the if uh, the, the optimal solution will always be an integer. So, mm. yeah, so I didn't trust it. Yeah. Um, so I think. Yeah, so that's both yeah. C and uh, C and K. So do you want to talk I, about A? Do you want to? I don't know if I want to talk about A yet because because solely for the fact that I have not accept have this affected, so I don't know if my solution is correct. Okay, let's but, then let, yeah. But well, yeah, I will I will discuss level, my yes. yeah, yeah, yeah I will discuss my solution anyway. Mm -hmm. Okay, so so for each um like. There are there's a like a really big like a really long line, um, and you want to basically go from one line to the other. Along the line, there are coffee shops, and then on the co from the coffee shops, you can buy coffee. Yeah, very very interesting. So you can buy coffee. Um, for each cup of coffee that you have bought, you need to wait some amount of second before you can drink it. And then you drink it for some other amount of seconds. Yeah. Um, and you are also given two parameters. The first one is the parameter, which is the speed when you are not drinking coffee. And the second one is the speed that when you are drinking coffee. <clears throat> Sorry. Yeah. So you are given those two parameters. And you want to find uh, also along the way if you have like you if you're holding a cup of coffee on your hand and maybe you're drinking it you're maybe you're waiting for it but if you find another another, another coffee shop you can discard that coffee cup you have in your hand and then buy a new cup from that coffee shop but you cannot have like multiple cups on your hand at the same time yeah so yeah um this problem is um, I, I would say it's really DP-ish. Um, basically, what you need to do is to find um, the important positions. So, namely, the, the important positions are, um, yeah, um, the first one is the beginning at zero. The second one is at the end. Um, and then for each coffee shop, there are three important positions. The first one being, <coughs> excuse me, the first one being the position of the coffee shop. The second one being the positions where if you buy a cup from that coffee shop, then you will start drinking it. So that means the coffee shop plus um, waiting time, waiting time times the um, speed uh, non-drinking speed. So this position is where you will start drinking coffee if you bought a coffee from this coffee shop. And the third, third position is when you have, uh, is, is the position where you finish drinking the coffee from that coffee shop. So that means that coffee shop plus waiting times the non-drinking speed. So this is the beginning position of the drinking and the ending position of the drinking would be um, drinking time times drinking speed. So these uh, are the Trump, two positions. So uh, I guess uh, is it true that uh, if uh, if they allow quadratic solution, then it will be uh, much easier. So it, uh, you only need to consider each coffee shop to a, when you're doing DP. Is that is that is that true or not? I think it's true. So okay. So basically, yeah. yeah okay. Because then you can scan through your earlier things to decide the, what will be the optimal thing. Mm. But and the, the reason you need to introduce this is because uh, you want to avoid the, the quadratic. Is that is that correct? That is correct. Okay. okay. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. In any case, we can do DP on 
on, on, on these positions. Though, so there are three n plus two positions that we need to, 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 to consider about. And then we can also, along these positions, we can also use some sweep line. <clears throat> so basically there are some sweep line at this, uh, like there are some events at this be beginning positions where it says that you can start drinking from this position. And there are some events at this position that says that you may stop drinking from that position. So yeah, so just maintain some set, do some DP, and then I guess that's, that's basically this problem. Except my pitfall was that I think I utilized too many data structures. Hold on, I, I shall move this. My did you run out I, of memory or something? Or? No, I did not run out of memory. Okay. I ran out of time. So I uh, like I do have those positions, but like what normal people would do is they would put all of these positions in a in a container and then they sort it and then mm -hmm. they uh, basically compress the coordinates into one two mm -hmm. three times n to the two. I instead I don't do this. I directly put all of like I directly put dp coffee shop and all of those stuff. I directly put dp position and and then I calculate it like this. So so uh, basically I will put it into a map or something. Yeah, okay. I use all of the maps here. So I guess it's just like a lot of lock and it doesn't like it. Yep, that's the that's that's my solution. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, that's a. Do you want to talk about H? I don't uh, want to talk about the solution to H, but I will talk about an important lesson I learned on H. Okay. Which is that whenever you can keep things in geometry in integers, you should. <laughs> Okay. So, uh, I, so, so it has to do with calculating angles and comparing whether two angles are equal or not. Um, so I, I was, I falsely assumed that because the coordinates were integers and only at most a thousand in absolute value, that, um, that calculating the angle exactly, like as a, or calculating the angle as a floating point would be enough. But, and then, but even with like long double and a really small epsilon, comparing them just wasn't good enough and I kept getting wrong answers. Yeah, I remember, remember seeing that uh, in some problem in the past uh, that uh, maybe most likely it's uh, you did. Uh, I remember there's uh, several thousand and comparing angles and they can get the awfully close. The, but mm -hmm. I guess it's because the, the fractions, you can construct the fractions that are not quite the same, but they are, they are extremely close. Uh, how close? But uh, yeah. yeah, so knowing how to compare angles, if you're just given like integer vectors is very important. And the idea behind it is just to, is just to realize that the slope is like a rational number and you can store a rational number, not as a floating point, just as like a pair. Mm -hmm. Another way to think about it is like you can use cross product to detect if something's to the left of another. But yeah, moral of the story is keep things in integers when you can. Okay, does anyone have some questions? Okay, let me stop.